Louis Steph. And now, yeah. this week, we learned Pete that um, Pete Burns died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can you share a memory you have with him? I have so many funny memories of <clears throat> Pete Burns. I mean, when I first met Pete Burns, he walked up to me in the 70s and said, you've copied my look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the at first. The club, no, this was at a club called um, the Camden Palace. Right. I was going to the toilet and I was confronted by <laughs> Pete Burns, his wife Lynn, and Steve Coy, who, you know, was the drummer. And he came up to me. I had dreadlocks, he had dreadlocks. And he said, You copied my look. And I was like, I don't look like you. You know, and there was the kind of confrontation. Um, I knew about Pete long before I met him. You know, the interesting thing about the 70s, you know, after punk, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have the, you know, um, any kind of form of communication other than fanzines. There were some magazines, you know, but that was still to develop. But somehow we knew about each other. I knew about Pete Burns in Liverpool, Eric's Club. I knew about, you know, the bands that he was in. So there was kind of Pete Burns in Liverpool, there was Martin Degville, in Birmingham who went on to become Zig Zig Sputnik mm. and there was me, Marilyn, you know, and the kind of character Steve Strange in London. Mm. We all knew about each other. Like and in fact, one of the funniest memories I have in the 70s was I really wanted to go to Liverpool because I heard this Club Eric's was like the place to be. Mm. And we were terrified to go because we were told if we went to Liverpool, we'd get beat up. All right. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> we like, you know, we were like, you know, back in the 70s, like the way you looked was, it was like, It was everything. Right. And if you went somewhere and you looked slightly similar to someone else, they would kind of punch you. Right. So, you know, so initially with Pete Burns, there was a lot of hostility, you know, and then eventually after a few years, you know, we sort of became friends and shook hands. And But, in you know, in the 80s, a lot of, we said a lot of bitchy things about each other. I used to call him third degree Burns. <laughs> And then when I had my first um, flop single, when, when the metal song didn't chart right. very highly, he said he was going to send me a reef. <laughs> so, you know, it was kind of, there was a lot of bitchiness. It was really funny. But, you know, I loved him. I mean, he was an amazing character and, you know, um, always fascinating. You know, you, 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 when, when he walked into a room or when he walked down the street, you couldn't avoid him. Yeah. You know, what he turned himself into was quite outstanding and quite shocking as well, you know, quite shocking. But um, but I think, you know, as a kind of fellow weirdo, you know, he's someone that I kind of had a lot of admiration for. You know, he lived his life very much in the spotlight. You know, he was, he couldn't hide because of what he created. He was, yeah. you know, you couldn't walk down the, like, I can disappear. I can disappear. Can? Yeah, I take off my hat, take off my makeup, put on a hoodie, right. some glasses, and people don't really notice me. Okay. But when, you know, when Pete Burns left the house, you know, he had to always be Pete Burns. Mm. Yeah.